Good morning, everyone. It's May 1, 2013, and I want to thank everybody for taking your time to come celebrate with us. This is the day that we will be launching a month long of celebration for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. It's a very special time of the year for some of us because it's really a time that we come together and spend a little more time with each other. I was thinking about this when I was driving down to City Hall today and I say, hmm, you know, we, a lot of us see each other all the time during the year, but it is the law of this country, the month of May was designated every year for the special celebration of the culture and the heritage of Asian Pacific Americans. So I'm glad that we in San Francisco, it is a time for us to come together. Um, this celebration every year would not have happened if a community of volunteers do not come together to plan this. Um, I must say that you know, the, the volunteers committee met since last November and every year we think about what do we do? How do we bring our people together? Because as you know, there are over 30 ethnic groups within the Asian Pacific American family. So we are a very, very diverse group. And when we think about APA Heritage Month, we don't think about Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, Vietnamese, and Filipinos, and all the rest. We think about the Asian Pacific American family. I think that's so special about who we are. Um, and we are in a city that welcomes that. We are in a city with a mayor that is one of our own. And we cannot be more proud with that, uh, that Mayor Lee is here today to help us kick off a whole month of celebration. Mayor Lee? Thank you, Claudine. Claudine, thank you for your annual work, you and the wonderful Heritage Celebration Committee. Uh, I know you get together with everybody months in advance to pull this off, and uh, there's an exciting number of events that we have. But let me, let me say, first of all, uh, thank you to uh, Accessory Recorder, Carmen Chu, for joining us today. Thank you for our newest supervisor, Katie Tang for joining us as well. Uh, they're both going to be, of course, great partners in helping me run the city. Uh, also, uh, again, to the committee that there's going to be so many events happening this month. The, the month of May, uh, for all of you, is a very, very busy month. Many, many different events. Uh, and I often go back to that uh, nice musical that I watched many years when I was young, Camelot, where they always refer to the lusty month of May. Uh, there's so much stuff going on. It's spring and a lot of things, and the Warriors are winning, the Giants are winning, and there's so much uh, things, uh, events that are going on in this month. And again, the whole month, uh, we get to celebrate all the things that we do in the city that celebrate diversity in general and that are focused on our broad, broad, and deepening Asian community. And as Claudine said, even though I'm Chinese, I love uh, the fact that I can celebrate with the Vietnamese community, with our Korean community, our, certainly our Filipino community, learn all the subgroups that are forming that have come here, not only in San Francisco, the whole Bay Area. And we come together. I know uh, we have a very special event coming up on Monday at the Jazz Center, which is going to be, I think, for everybody a first uh, to visit uh, that and to celebrate. And uh, I want to thank uh, the people who have uh, uh, been judging uh, for our themes because it's not just cultural celebrations. We're actually focused this year on uh, the Asian contribution to the performing arts. And uh, hopefully that gets me closer to Hollywood because we have a lot of stars in our communities. And I know that um, in this era when we grown up, uh, certainly my parents did not necessarily uh, put a great focus on the arts. Uh, but I know that as families start to establish themselves, and certainly for me and Anita, uh, we wanted to make sure our kids had an appreciative arts. We actually forced them to do piano lessons. But then, as they grew up, they really appreciated it they, because they play and they enjoy. And that's why uh, my daughters got into the, uh, uh, the Youth for Asian Art at Lowell High School, YFAT. Uh, that gave them uh, exposure. And I, 
I know Katie knows that because she was introduced to it at the same time where drama and the performance complemented their education. And so now arts has become part of our education because the appreciation of that means you're even more well-rounded in the things that we do. And for many of you who have worked with me in the last couple of years, you know that arts is leading the effort to revitalize Market Street, the Tenderloin, South of Market. Uh, it's, the, it's the rising of that. Uh, and I know that nobody uh, in this room knows better than Dr. Lisa Stevens of the Academy of Art University because you look at her business, it's growing because people appreciate the role of arts in all of our lives, it enriches us, but it's also a great profession to become a part of. It's a great a point of education. The arts is now become uh, a critical partner with technology. You can't sell products without designing them for people who want to use them. Uh, you can't enliven people's enthusiasm without role in arts. And so it's part of our business as well. So uh, I think this great uh, contribution, uh, the arts, is, is going to be wonderful. And I want to thank Dr. Stevens. I want to thank Blanche Richards. I want to thank Billy Wong from uh, Bay Cat for being the three wonderful judges that had the very difficult task of selecting uh, these wonderful contributors to our arts programs in the Bay Area that will be announced on Monday, I believe. Uh, so they don't get to put the pressure on the mayor anymore to make those decisions because we always lose, you know, uh, support when we, when we only have one winner. So we're putting it on, on them. Uh, but anyway, uh, again, that's just one aspect. Come May 18th, we have, of course, the annual 9th uh, Street Fair, uh, Asian Heritage Street Fair. That'll be here right at Civic Center along Larkin Street. And again, a wonderful celebration of bringing together multi- cultural Asian participation. Uh, and uh, those are, that's a lovely, lovely uh, street fair because it is one of the largest ones. It just keeps building every year. And I know Ted Fang and the wonderful contributions of his committee is going to be very helpful to that. Um, uh, there'll be many other events during this month that, again, celebrate uh, Asian heritage, uh, cultural arts, performing arts, uh, we have a lot that we're contributing to the whole art scene in all of the United States. And I know this is going on not only in our city, but across the country. I want to take the moment to also uh, give my personal thanks to the corporate uh, sponsors, because we could not, we're, we're doing this without government funds, and it, it becomes invaluable to us, these public-private partnerships. And I want to give a lead thanks to Target stores for their uh, lead contribution for the third year and of course we'll work with them on the fourth year because this keeps going so thank you Target but there are so many others uh, of course Academy of Art University, at and I see Mark's here today, pg e Kraft Foods, uh, Mickadies or McDonald's as some people call it thank you CC uh, for being here and of course Wells Fargo Bank are all great contributors to this growing uh, celebration I also want to say that it's not just celebration. We've got a lot of work to do in this country. Uh, and that's why part of my work uh, in visiting Washington, D.C. last week was to work with Mayor Villa Grossa and represent the mayors of this country to push our country to make sure this month, if not the next month, we get comprehensive immigration reform done. Because that's part of why immigrants came to this country. We've established ourselves. Uh, immigrants from all the different backgrounds. Uh, we made San Francisco one of the most special homes for immigrants, but we need to see uh, our country modernize its immigration laws. We need to see that comprehensive immigration reform done. We need to celebrate more family unification. We need to get the dreamers here so they don't live in shadows, uh, but they live full lives. They earn the living that they have because we know that if people live in shadows, uh, they're going to have to and be forced to accept uh, worse conditions for their jobs, for their families. But we also know that as soon as someone has a pathway to citizenship, their economic prowess, their ability to earn, their ability to contribute to our communities grows exponentially. 
And this is also part of not only celebration of the work that we need to do as mayors, as senators, let's get this comprehensive immigration reform done in our lifetimes. Because if it doesn't happen this year, I guarantee you it will not happen in our lifetimes. And we've got to get it done. So that's why we were there in Washington, D.C., advocating uh, with our partners to do that. That should be part of the way we celebrate is we work harder to earn uh, uh, the paths forward for everybody else. Uh, I didn't become mayor just to celebrate. I also became mayor to keep the doors of opportunity open for future generations. And it means a lot for the whole uh, Asian community to be a part of this as well because you know what opportunity is. We seize upon it and then we work it and then we open the doors for everybody else and that's how a city becomes successful as we keep those opportunities open. So it means much more than just cultural celebrations. You put it in the light of history, uh, you work it with all of the elected officials and the appointed officials, whether they're commissioners and department heads, and we have even more to work and to celebrate and to bring a lot more people involved in it. So uh, Claudine and the committee and all of you who are here to celebrate, let's begin this month in a celebratory fashion, but let's keep the work going and let's keep opportunities going and let's make the month of May to be the greatest month and by the way, I get to celebrate my birthday at the same time. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mayor Lee. So today's press conference is about thanking our sponsors. It's about a very exciting announcement of uh, the finalists of the APA Heritage Awards this year. Uh, before I bring up our elected officials uh, to, to uh, address you, I just want to take a moment to thank again all the volunteers serving on the com committee to put this together, uh, especially our two co-chairs, Kisa Ocampo and Mary Nicely. Thank you so much for your leadership. <laughs> and members of the executive committee, Rose Chung, Jack Chin, um, and Cindy Tong. We are a very small group, but you know, I think we come together and we make things happen, and that's the most important. Um, so uh, without further ado, I would like to invite um, as Supervisor Katie Tang, and then followed by um, Assessor Carmen Chu. All right, welcome everybody. I just wanted to again take this opportunity to thank Claudine Chang and all of the hardworking volunteers for their work and putting all the celebrations together. I know as an aide, I worked with Claudine on this, so I know how hard you work. Um, as Mayor Lee was talking about his experiences and his daughters uh, taking piano lessons, I actually, uh, especially with the theme this year of honoring achievements in the performing arts, thought about how, yes, back then I was part of the band. <laughs> I played the flute in middle school and high school, and, and at that time it was very cool. <laughs> and we actually got to the point where we got to perform at Carnegie Hall, and it was such a really great experience. And I just can't imagine what my life would have been without um, having that uh, in my background. And so really want to, as we're celebrating again the performing arts, really want to encourage everyone to incorporate that into their lives um, and hope that many more generations of people uh, will consider that a part of their childhood growing up as well. Um, and again, just want to thank everybody. Uh, we're so lucky to be here in San Francisco where we embrace diversity and accept all sorts of people from all different cultures. So uh, hopefully this month will be a great time as many of us are so busy in our lives. I think that having a month where we're dedicated to celebrating um, things such as Women Histories Month or Asian Pacific Heritage Month, uh, Small Business Month, it really takes, uh, makes us take a moment to stop and think about all of the achievements and celebrate um, our different cultures. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> Assessor Carmen Chu. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Carmen Chu, San Francisco's new assessor. And today, I'm very, very honored to be here with you. I want to thank, of course, all of our corporate sponsors, to Claudine, to the many volunteers who have helped, I think, year in and year out to really put this event together. I want to appreciate you. Um, but I also want to, to say, I know that this year's theme is about uh, arts. Uh, I was not a young person who really did much in terms of arts. Uh, I didn't play any instrument, probably played the recorder when I was in second grade. <laughs> Hasn't expanded beyond that very much. Uh, but I think we can all appreciate what art does and the people who can actually uh, carry that forward and what that really brings and how it enriches all of our lives. Uh, I think in all of our lives we see how art plays into it. Uh, when I negotiate with my husband on who's cooking, I think that's a little bit more art. 
when I think about the work that our assessor's office does, uh, it's a little bit more art than science in terms of valuing properties. And so even in the places where you least expect uh, art and discretion and creativity to exist, it does exist. And so, of course, we appreciate all that the arts community has to bring. Uh, one thing I do want to finally end on and, and emphasize, I think Mary Ed Lee's point about not only celebrating our accomplishments, but thinking about the work that we have yet to do is a very important one. And so as we think about how far we've come, uh, the fact that we do have our first San Francisco mayor who's Asian American and we can celebrate all of those accomplishments, let's also think about the folks who still need advocacy, the folks who are the immigrants, people who still need services, people who still have uh, the rights uh, not yet fully upon them. And so let's take this month to celebrate, but maybe do one other thing. Maybe call a senator, maybe call someone in Congress and say what you think about immigration policy. Let's do something. Let's take one extra step, one extra action this month uh, to not only recognize recognize what we've done and the people who've done all the work beforehand to give us these opportunities now, but what we can do to help the next generation forward. So today I just want to thank you uh, and ask you uh, to do one other thing uh, to really help promote the Asian American community and just cultural diversity in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen, and thank you, Katie. So um, at this point, I'd like to inv invite our major sponsors to give their remarks and let us know why they want to support us as the mayor have already invited you to continue to support us. So um, without further ado, um, our presenting sponsor this year, Target, for the third year, really appreciate it. Tiffany Ma is here representing Target today. Tiffany. Thank you, Claudine. Good morning, everyone. I am both privileged and honored to be a part of this annual celebration in recognition of APA Heritage Month. I just love the way San Francisco continues to celebrate its rich cult multicultural diversity. I'm Tiffany Ma, and excited to say the new store manager for the soon-to-be second city Target store in San Francisco this October, located on Geary and Masonic. As a San Francisco native, I'm proud to represent Target and be a part of a company who has a legacy of giving back to its local communities. Even before Target opened its doors, we were giving back 5% of our income, which today equals more than $4 million a week to local communities. Target is supporting several community initiatives throughout the month of May, with a common theme around celebrating our vibrant Asian cultural heritage. Again, we are honored to be a part of today's APA Heritage Month kickoff celebration, and Target looks forward to our continued partnership with the city of San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. And uh, next we are at the next level. We call them the Her Heritage Champions, uh, starting with the Academy of Art University, President Stevens. Thank you, and thank you, Claudine, for including me in this wonderful event. It's been um, a pleasure. Uh, I've met new people and new friends. My grandfather started the Academy of Art University in 1929, he and my grandmother, and they were very good friends with Don Kingman, and Mr. Kingman sat on our board and taught at the Academy. And when the Academy was in a two-room loft, uh, they moved around quite a bit because the landlords kept upping the rent and there is a uh, they were in Chinatown for several years in an alley uh, over uh, I think it was the uh, Lights of China restaurant and they ran the school in Chinatown so we have a strong affiliation with Asian Pacific Americans um, Frankly, they set the standards at the Academy of Art University, and uh, we welcome them with open arms because of their work ethic, their diligence, and their strong aesthetic. And in fact, one of our alums who's sitting here in the audience um, actually designed the poster and instructs for us now. Sinji, do you want to just stand up and say hi, Academy of Art University grad? And as you know, uh, we are art for industry and we're creating portfolios for students so that they can get jobs of the 21st century. And I'm proud to say that Asian Pacific Americans are leading the charge and getting those jobs for the 21st century. And we're very, very proud 
uh, of them as students, and I'm very proud to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Elisa and Mark Brakeman from at and Thank you, Claudine. It's a pleasure to be here again and represent at and uh, We This is the, uh, I think, the sixth or seventh year. Uh, we've been around since the beginning, I believe, of supporting uh, this important month. And we, uh, it's very much part of our culture and heritage as well, whether it's um, um, owning the oceanic uh, cables that connect us with Asia um, here in, into California, or whether it's upgrading our network. I really appreciated the mayor's comments about the role technology plays in the arts, and at and likes to think that they have a, a major role in that and, and bringing uh, arts and communication to all of the residents of, uh, here in uh, in San Francisco. I also wear two hats today. I'm also the, the president of the board of the Asian Pacific American uh, Heritage Foundation. And so I wanted to give a brief uh, uh, acknowledgement to my fellow board members. And if you could please stand, I won't uh, name all of them, but uh, the, the great work that they've done and, and uh, helping out and planning this month's events. Uh, pl please give them a round of, a, of applause. And then finally, while we have this great board and this great committee, uh, none of us would be here without the undying uh, efforts of Claudine Chang, who puts her heart and soul and energy into this event every year. So I, 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 we thank you for that as well. So thank you very much. I look forward to celebrating with you on Monday and for the remainder of the month. Thanks, Claudine. Thank you, Mark. And uh, Melissa Hang from PG&E. Thank you, Claudine. PG&E has served and engaged with California's Asian American communities for over 100 years and is proud to continue its sponsorship of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. The communities have in turn played a major role in determining how the company delivers services to our customers. PG&E recognized the importance of in-language services a century ago when it opened its first payment offices in San Francisco's Chinatown in 1905. We have given hundreds of scholarships to deserving students across our service territory, totaling over $1 million. In addition to supporting the community through various grants and volunteerism, PG&E is a strong supporter of Asian-owned businesses and organizations, spending $290 million last year and overall $2 billion with diverse suppliers in 2012. In short, we are proud to be part of this community and happy to celebrate APA Heritage Month. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Um, the next group of sponsors that we have, the Heritage Patrons. We have uh, Ron now from Crowd Food. Ron, are you here? Uh, ah. And you are? Catherine, hi. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Claudine. Um, I'm Catherine Lee. I'm here on behalf of Ron, who's not feeling so well this morning. So on behalf of Kraft Foods Group, um, it is our pleasure to be here um, celebrating the APA Heritage Month. Kraft Foods and its tens uh, of thousands of employees nationwide are excited about this event in San Francisco because Asian Pacific Americans have made such a large contribution in this country, in this state, and of course in this city. Um, at all levels of government, uh, business, and society. The product of all of the work of our immigrant fathers and mothers are evidenced by the people standing in this room, the various elected officials, the company representatives who have strived and made their way up in their respective positions, and all around us in our daily lives. This month is to celebrate all of those particular achievements, um, and more importantly, from Kraft's perspective and all of the programs it does um, with the community, with its own employees, it's the opportunity to be able to show our future generations of Asian Pacific Americans the impact that they too can make as they're in school, in the arts, um, in government, and we are at Kraft Foods so, so pleased and so, so privileged to be able to celebrate this very special occasion, and we look forward to being a part of this month. Thank you, Claudine. And a longtime friend from Wells Fargo, Mario Diaz. Thank you, Claudine. 
It's my pleasure to be here this afternoon to uh, share with you that celebrating diversity and cultural uh, uh, celebrations is a key value at Wells Fargo. And uh, we celebrate it not just in, in this month, but every month. And it's the true um, people that, contribute, that are the contributors, the finalists, that are going to be honored in the area of arts that we want to acknowledge for their achievements every day of the year. They go on notice, and it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity to renew our support of the APA Heritage Foundation and celebrate their achievements that sometimes go unnoticed. And so I hope that we're all here together uh, as a family to really celebrate what they have to offer and we can support them in any way we can going forward. Thank you. For this part of the program, I want to make sure that the important person, the godfather as we know him, has the last word. Because the godfather always has the last word. Mr. C.C. In, the founder of APAPA and many organizations, we all know him as the godfather, so we're happy for McDonald's support today. Thank you. I'm not that old yet. <laughs> You're so beautiful. Thank you, Claudine. Uh, your personal uh, leadership and sacrifices so many years to help us to celebrate um, the API's Heritage Month along with other diversities. Uh, on behalf of McDonald's, uh, the corporation and the franchisees, um, I also wanted to introduce my McDonald's colleague, uh, Jackie, where are you? And. Uh, Oh yeah, they're standing, the two beautiful ladies in the back there. Give them a good hands. They are here to represent McDonald's. Along with me, I, I, me, me, as you can see, you can see my nose eyes as an Asian guy, right? <laughs> I, too, I come to San Francisco. My first job was a, was, was a, um, uh, is an engineer with uh, that company, what's, I uh, forgot, okay. I was an engineer for, for many years, then later I became McDonald's, uh, franchise. See, as you can, you talk about arts and the technology. Everybody get hungry every day. That's, that's why, you know, food is a big part of Asian culture, right? It's big, big arts as well. I, uh, as an engineer, I really don't understand much of that. And my wife is when always teaching me how to dress, how to cut her, and how to cut her hairs. And, but I'm very proud to be part of uh, the Asian car, car, uh, heritage and, uh, and the history and the pride in building San Francisco and the California and the nation, the river and so forth. Now we're here and not only uh, building this beautiful city, but how about the, our beautiful state and the country as well. And uh, my family own four McDonald's here in San Francisco, along with a few others um, in Northern California. And uh, uh, that uh, so when you guys hungry, you know where the I think we have 19 locations here, right, uh, Jackie, right? Yeah. So uh, we're we're here to serve everybody uh, and to make sure we do our part here, and we're very happy to be big part of this celebration. Thank you very much to invite McDonald's. So you you have any problem, don't call me, call Jackie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, CC and McDonald's. So on the subject of food, uh, as all of you know, we will have a very sumptuous, I hope, hopefully sumptuous, uh, luncheon waiting for you at the end of this press conference. Uh, I just want to uh, take this opportunity to thank the many food and beverage uh, participants of the reception. Without them, we won't have our uh, great the reception that we're going to have. I want to acknowledge uh, Strix Cafe and Le Soleil, who have been here for eight years uh, with us. Uh, New Delhi for six years. Uh, those are restaurant, my friend Amy uh, Mitra for two years, and the newest addition this year um, from the Infusion Lounge. So I hope you have a great lunch, but before that, very important, the most important business uh, is to turn this over to our co-chair, Mary Nicely, who, who make the announcement for the, for the award finalists for our APA Heritage Awards this year. Mary. Jack instructed me. Did I do this right, Jack? Okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you all for being here today, and I am really very excited to be able to announce the uh, finalists 
for this year's Performing Arts uh, Award. And many of them did not know who their competition was, as we are going to say it. So this is going to be a surprise for them. But um, as Carmen said uh, earlier, I was one of those people who stopped playing violin at second grade really can't sing, really can't do anything. So, so the performing arts for me is, it's, I'm always just awestruck and so, so privileged to be able to meet people of this caliber. And uh, we had so many fantastic nominations this year in the area of inspirational leadership, community impact, and lifetime achievement. So my first category for nominations, and if you'll stand when I say your name, please do so. Inspirational leadership, we have Brenda Wong Aoki. We have Malu Rivera Peoples. And our nominee, Young Suk Kim, could not be here today, so representing her is her daughter, Jiyeon Sun. Hopefully, I hope your mother is doing well. Her mother's in Korea right now. So the next category is in the area of community impact. And these finalists uh, organizations, we, had so, we, we have this diverse, amazing community that we live in with so many organizations that do so much to try and bridge the gap and support our young APA, and not so young APA performing artists, who can't seem to sometimes break through into the um, mainstream, but also not break through our own cultural groups uh, in our own, we're, we're such a diverse community, as uh, Claudine had said. There's, I can't even name how many uh, ethnicities and cultures and countries are in the APA community. And so these particular organizations have done a fantastic job of trying to bridge these cultural gaps and support the artists. So those organizations are Asian American Theater Company. Is Pearl, is, are they here? Is that someone from Asian? Is that Pearl? <laughs> it's Pearl Wong, who I end up in her junk mail a lot. So we have to fix her email <laughs> for that. We have Asian Improv Arts. We have the Asian Week Foundation Heritage Street Fair. And I don't know if Ted is still here, but as the mayor said, a fantastic organization that has been uh, bridging these cultural divides and bringing the APA heritage, uh, APA celebration uh, to all of us. And collaboration, San Francisco, Christine. And one of the things that we found during the nomination selection process was how much we as a committee learned about organizations in our own communities that we did not know about. So this has been a wonderful learning experience for all of us, and I hope that this is a, uh, will, will bring more attention to these fantastic artists that are out there. And so our last category is for lifetime achievement. And this is for individuals who have been for at least 25 years, had some impact in our the APA community, have used this uh, amazing performance ability themselves to um, to share their culture, but also give back to their communities as well. So I'm really, really honored to be able to announce we have Robert Tamaka Bailey. We have the team of John Jang and Francis Wong. <laughs> and once again, I am really thrilled to be able to announce a double nominee, <laughs> Malo Rivera Peoples. Congratulations to all of you for being nominated and being selected as finalists, and we look forward to see who our judges have selected as our awardees on May 6th at the Jazz Center. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, Thank for you. all your work. Thank you. So um, I just want to uh, take a moment to thank members of the Sister City committees that are here, that those that have joined our committees, because this is all about people that have come from the Asian Pacifics. And I want to thank um, 
Carmen Collette from the Manila Sister City Committee, Irene E. Riley and Elizabeth from the Taipei Sister City, George Saxon and all your friends from the Ho Chi Minh Sister City, and I know that Kathleen Kimura of the Osaka Sister City Committee is somewhere around here. Thank you so much. Hi. So, um, so as I looked about next Monday, May 6, uh, the program will start at, uh, before 5.30, doors open at 5. Um, but from what uh, our, my co-chairs told me, uh, our website registration for attendance at the Jazz Center is actually over capacity. So it's going to be a great event, great, and great cultural entertainment. I can't wait to see uh, who the winners are of the awards, and I want to thank the judges again for your work, and uh, so please try to arrive early at the Jazz Center uh, for the ceremony on next Monday, and then after that we will all be back here for a reception, and again thank you for the Academy of Arts, I understand that there will be some shuttles for those, for those people that uh, may not want to walk, so, um, so that's great, and I want to thank you all for coming, uh, and before I forget, also I want to thank the Mayor's Office, without all of everybody, you know, it's hard to uh, make things happen, Francis Sang, Jason Chan, uh, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, they're all very, very supportive and helpful. So I want to thank them. So um, at this point, I think we are adjourned, and please join us down at the North Lake Court and enjoy your lunch. And we'd like to have all the